Lord bless our Lord Jesus this morning. Listen to me, don't celebrate your challenges. Don't celebrate the obstacles in your life. But as I celebrate Jesus this morning,
you will sing as well. We sing songs that says we, it's more louder. But when it is I, it is lower. Lack of understanding. Praise the name of the Lord. May you be blessed. May you be blessed. I want to give you 15 seconds. Give yourself affirmation. Say something to your neighbor about yourself. Look at your neighbor. Say something about yourself. In case you don't know me, let me introduce myself to you. My name is Malatubo Sushobi. And I'm who God says I am. I'm the best looker. I'm blessed with the blessings of God. I'm going to support you. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I am the edge, not the tail. I am the winner, not the loser. I am above only the name of the day. So it is already. Amen. You see, every time the challenges of life comes, the greatest challenge that the enemy wants you to have is the issue of identity. That when you pass through challenges in life, you just refuse for a second to understand who you are. You misplace your identity. And the moment that happens, the devil does what? He puts in more pressure. One of the things that the devil hates is for you to understand who you are. The prodigal son said, and now I will arise. And I will go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against the heavens and the earth. The moment he realized himself that, no, this is not where I should be. How can I be eaten with swans? I want you to, I'm going to give you one minute. You're going to speak to this week coming. This week, you will open for me. Open your mouth and pray. As I mentioned, speak to this week. This week, you will honor me. I declare favor on every side. Ta da! 40 more seconds. I give you 30 more seconds. Speak to this week.
is to understand God's mindset concerning your success. Today, to understand God's mindset concerning your success. Number two objective is to believe that anything short of success for you is not acceptable by God. Anything short of you succeeding in every facet of life is not acceptable unto God. God wants you to succeed financially, psychologically, materially, maritally, career-wise, in every facet of life. He wants you to do what? To succeed. But we live in an age that seems to be preoccupied with self-image. Everything is about self-image. Everybody wants to be important. Everybody wants to do something, just want to look somehow. Everybody looks at some people and says, okay, these people are the real deal. So you want to look at them. Now the Oxford Dictionary recently declared selfie as the word of the year. Selfie. They declared it as the word of the year. Selfie. It, is, it has become something that everybody just wants to look somehow. Everybody wants to give an image. You want to paint a picture of something, of success to the world. And why is it so? Because we found out that even when you see people, when you don't see good pictures of people that are successful, when you see these pictures, there is a way that our mindset shifts towards them. And we look at them in a way. Now, and that's why I love the program that they always do on TLC. It's called, um, what's the program called? Uh, billionaire CEOs. How many of us watch it? You know, what they do is the billionaires, the owners of these companies, they would dress in rags and they would go to their own company that nobody knew that, that they are the owners. And they say they're looking for a job. They will begin to work. Everybody will just treat them anyhow. A lot of the people in the factory did have never seen them before. They know the names. But the moment, everything, after about a few weeks, they will now go back to their status, wear their suits, drive their Lamborghinis. And everybody, oh, the boss is coming. But once they were there in the factory, nobody recognized them. And success, I've come to understand, is not a function of your image. It's a function of your spirit. A lot of people will continue to batter and to put things on their image to succeed. Yes, we have hearsays. We have sayings that says the way you are dressed determines the way you will be addressed. But you can continue to buy expensive things. Spend the money you don't have. People will address you as being something, but your pocket is suffering for it. So success is not a function of your self-appearance per se. It's a function of your spirit, the image that you have on the inside of you. Self-image goes by many names. Self-image, self-esteem, self-worth, self-confidence, self-respect. All these things are important for us to succeed. But there is a posture by which we must have. Now let's look at Numbers chapter 13, verse 30 to 33. Let's look at what it says. Look at it, Numbers chapter 13, 30 to 33. And we're going to look at this. Seeing yourself as God sees you. This is after God brought the children of Israel out of, you know, out of Egypt. Yesterday, I had to take time again. I watched the movie, uh, what's it called? Moses and Pharaoh. I had to watch it again. I just had to watch it. I had to watch it. And you could see in the life of Moses, when Pharaoh Ramsey asked him, is it true that your sister lived in this palace? She was one taking care of you. The moment it was confirmed that it was true, of course, God orchestrated everything. The moment it was confirmed that yes, you are a Jew, Hebrew, and yet you lived in the palace. What happened? Moses did what? He ran away. Meaning that the image that people used to look at him with, that image will no longer be found. And that is not success, ladies and gentlemen. It is not. The Bible says there is a spirit in man, the spirit of the Almighty, that does what? That gives him what? Inspiration. When that spirit is not there, no matter the tempest suit, no matter the 
six inches of shoes that you're wearing, there will be no success. There is a spirit. Everything from God is a function of the spirit. It is not a function of the physical. The physical plays an important role, but there is a spirit that controls the physical. Look at what it says. And Caleb still the people before Moses and said, Let us go up once and possess it, for we are all well able to overcome. But the men that went with him said, We will not be able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Imagine that we, how many people went, how did we become weak? And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had set from the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eated of the inhabitants thereof. Imagine, and all the people that we saw in it are men of a great stature. And there, were, and there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which came of the giants, and we were in our own sight, not in their sight. We were in our own sight all of a the sudden. Their image was relegated in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. And so we were in their sight. After all that God had done for them, Parted the Red Sea, gave them manna. And the last point, must stop. God is saying, just walk into it. This is the land I've been talking to you about. This is the land. Now go into the land. They said, we will never be able to go into it. But one man stood tall and said, I believe we can go. Let us go ahead and take it. Let us go and inhabit this city. Let us go and take over this city. Let us go and take what is rightful ours. And it's the same thing that in our lives, if we are not careful, the way the devil bends things to us can relegate us from this success. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So what am I going to say? Be careful. Hard times can make you think you don't deserve to be blessed or successful. When you're going through a very hard time, when life begins to throw challenges at you, you begin to look at yourself. No, this is the end of the road. How can good things happen again? But it's very imperative. For the Bible says, they that know their God will be strong and they will do exploit. Until there is a discovery on the inside of who God is, there might not be an explosion on the outside for what God is able to do. Until your mindset and your spirit man comes to that understanding that what you see on the, ins on the outside is a facade that what you have on the inside of you is able to turn things around for you, success might be inevitable. Praise the name of the Lord. Now let me give us few keys. Key number one, remember, any time you have something of value, the enemy will attack you. Any time there is something of value coming before you, the devil will attack you. It has been from inception, it has been from the creation, and it will be till the end of time. But most of the time as Christians, we tend to forget that when you are looking at something good, you just need to just go smoothly like that. No. Let me let you know that if you don't belong to this kingdom, you don't have any issues with the devil. But the moment you are in this kingdom and you are looking at success, you must come to that understanding that the devil will want to contend with your success. But you must stand firm and let the devil know from the inception, even before I was created in my mother's womb, God ordained for me that I will be successful. Devil, you came too late. Without that, a lot of people have succumbed to success at the time of trial. May that not be our portion in Jesus' name. Look at what happened here. Look at what happened here. When you are blessed because God proclaims it, listen to this. In 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 17, when the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king of Israel, they only heard. What was it that they did? They mobilized all their forces to capture him. They only heard he has been made the king of Israel. They said, you know what? If that is so, we're going after him. So for you to be able to be successful, you must deal with self, low self-esteem. You must have an image that portrays boldness that God is on your side. 
There will be times that you are offered things that are bigger than you. There will be times. There will be times that you are offered things that are bigger than you. You know, someone was sharing a testimony in the Bible church. I walked in here on a Friday, and as I walked in, they, you know, and the Lord gave me a word. And I went to them and said, Sir, don't wait. And the Lord said to tell you, I will try and interpret it in English. The Lord gave me in Europe, I said, My joy, Lord. Meaning that, how do you translate that? Only help me. I will surprise you. I will surprise you. So this person, the following week, he was at work, renting a small one office at this place of work. The next thing that happened, what happened? The owner of the complex now came to him and said, I need $60,000 now. Can you help me? Can you loan me $60,000? The guy said he doesn't have. He said, I need this money now, not tomorrow. He said, sir, I'm sorry, I don't have. He said, probably you don't understand. Okay, if I get 60000 now, this complex, I will sell it now. I need the money now. So he said, okay, so how much do you want to sell it for? He said, this all offices, this complex, I need the money now. If you can get me the 60000 we will do a deal. I will sign off the bill of sale to you and I will sell it to you for half a million dollars. He said, I, are you the owner of this place? He said, yes. Are you sure there are no issues? He said, yes. That is the bill of sale. He saw the title. There was nothing on it. He said, 60,000, 60,000, 60,000, 60,000, 60,000, 60,000, 60,000. Half a million, 60,000. He went outside the building. He looked at the whole building. Half a million. And as he was looking, somebody's name dropped in the spirit. And the person said, call this person. And he called that person. And as he called the person, he said, sir, I need $60,000 now. Six, now I need it today. The person said, what is the hurry? He said, something just came up. By the time he was done explaining to the person, the person said, come right here, we come and connect it. When they now said, oh, they now went to the bank. The bank now said, okay, they sent somebody there to go and evaluate the building. He said, how much is it worth? It's $1.6 million. And the person sold it to him because he needed 60000 For how much? Half a million. But the Bible said it. He said, the wealth of the wicked shall be transferred unto us. Now, how will somebody, your property, because you need a $60,000, you say, if I get it today, as we speak now, that brother owns that building. It's a, when I got there, I looked around, I said, sir, I said, are you sure it's all of it? He said, that's what it is. He said, let's go again, let's go to the other side. We went, I said, Lord, I'm, yes, I'm a church owner, one of our church members, yes, 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 that's what let's go. He said, we looked at it. He said, let me see the bill of sale. We saw the bill of sale. I said, Lord, may your name be exalted. You see, if you limit your image in this land, if you have no self-esteem, success, you are not even smell. As we speak now, they are signed a contract with all the other people work in that place. So he said to them, I'm now the new owner. He took over the process of it. He said, now we're going to renovate this place. He said, there are new ideas that he's going to put in there. Everybody's excited now. But how do you quantify? Immediately, he took possession of it. He had more than almost a million dollars sitting on it to go and do business. Self-image. Self-image. If you have said, ah, this one, I don't have a, no, 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 I don't do, I don't want to do. I don't want to do. I said, Pastor, what do you think? I said, make inquiries. Make sure there is no issue on it, there is no lien on it. I said, Pastor, there is no lien. Then go and call an appraiser. Do an appraisal on it. I said, Pastor, it's 1.5, 1.6. I said, today, today, heaven must open. I said, but Lord gave me somebody's name to call. Have you called? I said, the person said, come and take it right away. Let me tell you something, you don't know. There are people that you are sitting down with in this place. 
that if you are close to them and you understand them very well, that God grants you favor in their midst. You can just call them. There are people here that I know. I'm looking at you. You know yourself. I know yourself. Some of these people here that were sitting here, some have 300, half a million dollars cash sitting in their account. Some of the people here. And you don't know. Everybody just sits. But you don't know who you are sitting with. That is God for you. It is on the time when he opens your eyes that you will know that God indeed has plans for you. From this altar I speak, every spirit that relegates your manhood, that relegates who you are, let such spirit be eradicated in Jesus' name. Is that the best amen you can give? I said re receive boldness instead of low self-esteem. You need to be bold. If you are not bold, to be successful might be very, very hard. Might be very, very hard. Might be very, very, very hard. Might be very, 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 very hard. You need to be bold. Put away low self-esteem. Put it away. The church is working on the project, the DAR project. We're just about finishing some things. I went to a white man. I went to his office downtown last week. And I said, sir, we, yes, we know that we are at the tail end. In another few weeks, we should have all of our money to go and build. But I said, but we don't have the money and we, know, we need you to do this thing. I said, but uh, pastor, you know that, uh, you know, our contract says you must put something down. I said, I know, but you know again, that this project has to do with God. I said, you yourself, you know God owns you. This office, God owns it. I'm speaking to a Muslim here. In his office, downtown. Downtown. Big office. I said, you know God owns you. I said, you know that this thing is going to glorify our God. I said, don't you love God? Wouldn't you want your name to be on this project? Wouldn't you want God to take glory? He said, yes, pastor, that is true, that is true, that is true. He said, pastor, let me just have some discussion with some of my managers at work. And he went outside. I said, Holy Spirit, as he's going, just give him the tongue to speak to them. And he came back. I said, pastor, you know, we are the architectural firm, the mechanical, the electrical, the civil, we have agreed. We will do this work without any money for now. You see? They say a black man cannot talk to white man. It's because you are not bold. When God is on the inside of you, white, black, gray, yellow, purple, God created them all. All things bright and beautiful, God made them all. You must have boldness, your self-esteem. I walked in the office, the guy said to boss, I said, oh, sorry, sorry, pastor. I said, yes, pastor, pastor. Yes, I'm not afraid to be called a pastor. I'm not ashamed. When he came back to himself, he said, yes, pastor. He said, yes, pastor. I pray for you that at the edge of your success, every spirit that wants to lower the power of God in your life, let it cease in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Say to yourself, I am bold. As bold as a lion. Come on, I have confidence that God is able to do what he says he can do the word of God cannot lie because God is faithful what are we not talking about what are we not talking about you must know who you are I've told out the story of the brother before he took money from his credit card he did uh, what do they call it cash, cash advance at 20 some 20 point something percent he went and did his father's burial. And by the time he came back, the bank had been calling him and said, oh boy, you are holding us, come and pay up. Almost $20,000 cash advance. He went and did burial, came back. So he came to me and said, Pastor, they've been calling me that I'm holding. But Pastor, how will I show my face? I said, come on, go to the bank. Tell them you are the one. And let God, who is on the inside of you, speak for you. And that was how he went. And the moment he got to the teller, he said, oh, you know, I, I, this is who I am. He said, oh, but we'll be calling you. You will be calling you, you've not been answering us. You know, you're you're, you're, you're holding, you, you have not been paying. Ah, 
the guy felt sick. Kai, as a child of God. And then the person next to the teller, a Caucasian man, the man heard. And so the now said, okay, sit down. Let me go and call the manager because your case is different. Said your case, you have not paid at all. So let me call the manager. So they told him to sit down. So the white man at the next tell, the man just came to him and said, oh, are you a Christian? He said, yes. Oh, I heard what you said, ah, as a Christian. He said, yes, I'm born again, I'm a Christian. He said, which church do you go? He told him the church. He said, can I see you outside? So they went outside. He said to him, I heard you said you're owing. He said, yes. That it was very painful. He's been in this country for about seven years and his father passed away. And still as a student, he had to take cash advance to go and bury his dad. The man said, oh, so how much are we talking about? He told him. He said, let's go outside, let's go outside. And they went into his car. The man wrote the check for him. He said, go and pay off your debt, child of Zion. Go and pay it off. As a child of God, you should not hold. So when he got to the, tell, to the teller and he gave it to the woman, said, I want to pay. So she too, you know, confidence came. Said, I'm here. I want to pay off my credit card loan today. He said, where did you get the money from? So they now called the white man. They saw it when he was going. They called the white man into the office. Said, sir, did he harass you? Sir, did he gaggle you? Did he say anything? The man said, no. Please honor that check. I'm here. Honor it while I'm here. And that was how he went into the bank as a debtor. And he came out debt free. Why? Boldness. The Bible says the, the, the what? The righteous is as bold as lion. You must be confident that your identity as a child of God is the most valuable asset that you have. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Look at what happened in Judges chapter 6 verse 12 to 16. Look at what happened. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord who is thee, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto me, Oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befalling us? And we and where all be his miracles which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord had forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent thee? And he said unto him, Oh my Lord, look at the answer. He said, Go in this thy might. Have I not sent thee? Look at the answer that Gideon gave. And he said, Wherewith shall I, Israel, behold, my family is poor in Manasseh. What has your family been poor got to do with God sending you as a mighty man of valor. Self-image. My family is poor. Because the background of your family is poverty does not mean your background should always be on the floor. You can be the one to change the course of your family. You can be the one to change the course of your, 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 what? your village. Nobody has ever traveled abroad. Yes, you are here now. Nobody has ever made it in your family. You are here now. You have what it takes, God in you, to make the absolute difference. Look at what he now said. And the Lord said unto him again, Surely I will be with you, for thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. One man. But look at the response. My family is poor in Manasseh. What has that got to do? Self-image. Self-image. Let me let you know. If what you see in the mirror is what you're basing your life on, you have missed it in life. I love what Smith Wigglesworth said. He was a short man. He said, I'm a thousand times bigger on the inside than I am on the outside. And that man wrote miracles for God. No pardons to people that are short. You know, statistics have shown that the most wicked people that ever existed in the world are short people. And they said one of the reasons is because of low self-esteem. I'm sorry to say that. Go and read it. Go and look at the people that have caused havoc in our lives. Hitler, all of them. They are mini, minor, mini, Morris minor. All of them. They're not, they're not tall. But not being tall does not mean you cannot command exploits. It's a function of your mindset. It's a function of your mindset. The second thing that I want to quickly leave with you is what I called confidence. Say to your neighbor, confidence. 
Say to your neighbor, confidence. Now, confidence is a force. Is a force. And we'll be using David as a test case. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 35 and 36. Look at what it says. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. Confidence has great reward. The moment you cast it aside, there is no reward. It says what? Which has great reward? For you have need of endurance so that after you have done all the will of God, you may receive the promise. Tell your neighbor, your confidence has great reward. Come, I wanted to speak with audacity to that person. Your confidence has great reward. House of David, confidence is a force with which we achieve greatness and success in life. It is a force. We achieve greatness with it. Without confidence, success might not be possible. It's very imperative that we understand this. Looking at what is happening in our world, those who have the ability to become who God has created them to be, have had their heads bowed to situations and circumstances they find themselves because they lack confidence. You must be confident in who you are. You must be confident. I hear people say, oh, somebody told me I'm ugly. Who told you that? Who told you that? Who told you that? Who told you that? You are a reflection of God. You are a reflection of God. You need to tell yourself, even if they told you that, you need to redefine yourself. You need to change your name from being ugly to being good looking. To be good looking. To be good looking. I remember when we were in the university, I had a friend in school then. Everybody, the parents are wealthy. But everybody will look at this guy, man, this guy is, his face is something else. And because they used to tell him that, he brings in good cars to school. So we're just talking one day and, you know, he said, oh, you know, club guys that they want to, they want to do an uh, interview for him to welcome, they, they want to do an interview for a club. And he said, you know what, he doesn't need the club. That he feels confident in himself. He said, but in this school, in this Unilag, that is going to do great things. In less than three months, everybody started seeing him with his sister beside. One of the most beautiful ladies I've ever seen in my life. Wow. Her name was Ijoma. Computer science. And everybody said, how did it happen? It is not what you see on the outside. It's on the inside. Confidence. Haven't you wondered when you see some women and you see their husband say, how did it happen? <laughs> you are laughing. Has it, has, it uh, on, has it not happened to you before? Come on, has it not happened to you before? You will see some men and say, how did he get this woman? Hi! Where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Confidence. It's not a function of what you see. It's on the inside. And you must develop it. It is a force. It is a force. What is confidence? Confidence is the trust in someone's ability that it can never fail. It is not pride that it can never fail. It is relying on the fact that someone has the capacity and the ability to make good of their promise. And that is our God. Confidence. Tell your neighbor, tap your neighbor. Come on, be confident. Be confident, be confident, be confident. Be confident. You must be confident. You must be confident. You must be confident. Number one, Abraham was confident that whatever God makes, whenever God makes a promise, he makes good of his promise. As a seed of Abraham through Jesus Christ, God has promised you greatness and success. He will make sure that it comes to pass, but you have a part to play in it. You must be confident in the promises of God. He said, heaven and earth will pass away, but none of his words will go unfulfilled. When you hold on with such a dogged mindset, 
you will see the hand of God at work. Praise the name of the Lord. Quickly, how do we build confidence? How do we build confidence? Number one, you have to accept his invitation. You have to accept his invitation to come closer. When you are confident about something, you get closer to that thing. You get closer to that thing. That's why when you see a man, you know, your wife is beautiful, your husband is good looking. When you go for a party, you want to stay close. Now me get him. No, now me get him. You want to stay close. You are confident that you own it. And that's why you see some people, you know, when they go for, you're just rolling the car keys like this. You know, there's, you just see, you could see the star, Mercedes, you could see BMW, you say, ah, okay, they're telling you, this is it. You must be confident in who you are. Be confident. If people can be confident on things that have no eternal value, how much more your success, which the world must celebrate and God must celebrate? Praise the name of the Lord. How do you build confidence in God? Trust in God only and not in man. The Bible says, woe to him that put his trust in men. A lot of us have put our trust in men that they will help you and that's why God is not helping you. Why? God does not share his glory with any man. Even if a man promises you, still say, God, finish your work through him. Don't let that man be a demigod so that he will take the glory that God should take. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. You must acknowledge God with the plans of your life. Let God be part of it. Number three, serve him with all your heart. God is more interested with worshippers. Don't serve him with your with him. Don't serve him with condition. Serve him effortlessly, sacrificially, limitlessly, and see him in action. How do you build confidence in God? Keep a cheerful and a joyful heart, like, like Joseph did. No matter, the Bible says many are the what? Afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will do what? From some of them. No, some version says some. And the Lord will deliver me from all, all of them. The next one says, what's the next one? Let's move to the next slide. By not being weak, but strong in faith. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12. Every projected Hebrews 6 12. Let's look at it. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12. You must be strong in faith, which is the opposite of fear. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12. That ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. You must have faith, must be at work in you for you to inherit the promises of God. Let's go back. The next one says. Don't just seek God. Be what? A chaser and pursuer of God. When you chase after God, it goes all out to make you never to be put to shame. No matter what, where you are now, no matter the situation around your life, there is a greater level. A greater level of relationship with God, a greater level of breakthrough, prosperity and anointing, provided you don't lose your confidence in God. Confidence is important. Confidence. Confidence. You know, back home, when you're talking to, when our elders are talking to us, you dare not look at them, you look down. Please, when you go for interview here, don't look down, no. Because they won't call you again. They want to look at you, look at them in the eye. Eye contact. They want to see your level of confidence. They want to see it. They want to see it. They want to see your posture, the way you are. When they ask you questions, they want to see how you're able to answer it confidently. What can you do for us? They want you to talk. They want you to talk. They want to know. You know at times people go for interview. Oh, what did you do on this project? We, we, we. Who are the we? They're talking about you. Say, I did this. I did this. Tell them what you did. Be confident. Be confident. Be confident. I remember there was an interview that I went for. They said, oh, uh, so uh, do, when do you want to start? I said, I can start now. Now, today now, I can start. He said, but you know you must do a medical test. I said, yes, I'm ready to start now, now. They said, okay, let us check. They checked, they checked. They said, sorry. There is no, the hospital that they use, the clinic they use, said there's no vacancy until three weeks. I said, God forbid. Said, God forbid. Ah! Holy Ghost, at this edge of breakthrough, I beg, move. 
So as we were still talking and wrapping up, they said, how much, how much will I take? When I told them, they said, we're sorry. We don't pay that low here. Confidence. I'm coming from where we're, you know, come on, come on, come on. We're coming. So I said to them, this is how much I want. So sorry, we don't pay that low here. So I said, whatever you pay for that position, I will take it. <laughs> With that confidence, you will really get yourself at the gate of success. At the threshold of it, a lot of people, I said, whatever you pay for that position, I beg, mm, nah, pay me, pay me, pay me, pay me. Pay me right away. And as we were about to be done, they now came back and said, oh, you know what? We just got a call. They said somebody canceled their medicals. I said, glory to God. I said, so do we start on Monday? He said, if we get it done, and said, well, confidence. He said it's there. Through confidence, faith, don't cast away your confidence. It has great reward for you. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, I want us to look at, let's go to the next slide. I want to bring something out to us here. Let us look at David as a test case. It's a long scripture in 1 Samuel chapter 17, 31 to 51. Can we project it? I want to read it. I'll read it very, very fast. I'll read it very, very, very fast. It's a scripture that I believe will help us to see how confidence can speak and what you are able to earn through confidence. 1 Samuel chapter 17, 31 to 51. We can do it little by little, media. Thank you. More grace in Jesus' name. You didn't say amen to the media? Wow. This one is called, put on your binoculars. Okay. Who has magnifying glass here? Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And when the words were heard, which made David speak, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. He was telling them, after 40 days of torment from David, from Goliath, David was said, let no man's heart torment them. He said, because of him, thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said, it is not by experience, not, not how many years. So when the anointing of God comes upon your life, what years of labor could not give you? Days, hours will give to you. Look at what he said. And David said unto Saul, the servant kept his father's sheep. Confidence. Sheep. So man that has been fighting from his youth. But confidence. So I can equate him to a sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took the lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his head and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he had defiled the armies of the living God. David said, moreover, the Lord had delivered me out of the hands of this Philistine. Confident, without even fighting. I'm confident that he has delivered me. Look at what he said. And Saul said unto him, Go, and the Lord be with thee. And Saul armed David with his armor and put on the armament of brass upon his head. And also he armed him with a coat of mail. And David guarded his sword upon his armor and is assayed to go. And he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, mm -mm, I have not proved this thing. I have not proved this armory that you are giving to me. But I've tested and I can prove the word of God. I have proved the word of God that it works. So don't let me go with what has not been tested and proven. I said, I cannot go with this, for I have not proved them. And David put them off, and he took his staff in his hand, which he has proven. He has tested it, and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook. Grace. Why did he choose five? Another day. Another day. We will talk about that out of the brook and put them in the shepherd's bag which he had even in his scrip and his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine and the Philistine came on and drew near unto David and the man that bare his shield went before him is that all let's go to the next one and when the Philistine looked about looked about and saw David he disdained him for he was he was but a youth and ruddy and of fair countenance 
And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with steps? And the Philistines cursed David by his gods. And the Philistines said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air, and to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistines, Thou comest to me with the sword and with the spear and with the shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of God, the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defiled. This day will I, the Lord, deliver thee into my, into my hand, into my hands, and I will smite thee, and I will take your head off thee, and I will give thy carcass to the birds of the air. We all know the story. Confidence. Confidence. You see, when we read stories and you don't understand the practical aspect of it, you might not grasp the full picture of it. A full-grown, let's go back to the slide. A full-grown lion is eight foot long. Eight foot long. A full-grown lion is eight foot long. With what? with probably the strongest canine feet of all animals. A grizzly bear or polar bear, when he stands up, can reach up to nine foot and weighs about 1,400 pounds. And a 17-year-old boy looked at the lion and the bear and said, you know, I killed them. You took a sheep from me. I will come after you. Why did he do that? David knew that confidence was a matter of principle. If I don't deal with this lion and bear, they will come back again. Whatever your confidence, you lose your confidence over, will come back to you again. So David knew we had better cross this line now. Give me those pictures, please. In all humility, let me just share some pictures with you. Look at this bear. That is a bear, a polar bear. I took the picture for you to know what David encountered. You know, when we read scriptures, it's good to have the practical aspect of it. That is a polar bear, a life one embalmed in Alaska. We're privileged to be in Alaska last year. Look at me standing by that bear. Even me, if I see such a thing, Jehovah, let the ground open. Look at me standing. Look at, look at, look at the bear. Look at the claws. Look at the claws. And a 17 year old boy had the confidence to say, you won't take what belongs to me. I'll take it back from you. You won't take anything that God has put in my care. A lot of us, because we are not confident enough, we have allowed the enemy to take what belongs to us. When the enemy comes to your gate, you tell the enemy, take your hands off my property. Be confident enough to tell the enemy, the name of our God is bigger than you. Look at this. Look at it, look at the claws. Go to the next one. Look at this. Life one but embalmed. Even as I stood before that one, I was still looking back. God forbid that the same one's spirit came upon it. And that he came alive. Look at it. Nine foot, 1,400 pounds. The person that killed it, put the name there, the name is there. That I killed this thing. So a 17 year old boy, without a gun, without a sword, Without an arrow, all he had was his hand. Say, I tore it. I can imagine how tall he would be beside the lion. I can imagine how tall he would be beside the bear. When a bear slaps someone, don't even bother to go and look for that man. No, CR, no CPR will wake up that person. When a bear slaps, that is the end. She you know? with the claws, it will just tear. But a 17 year old boy was confident enough to say that God gave me sheep to look after and you want to take them? I will show you that the God on the inside of me is bigger than you. You see, 
until you are confident enough to know that the situation you are in is not God. It's yes, it came, but it came for God to be glorified. That you are not permitted to stay in it forever. Until you are confident enough to address it, you might remain there for a long time. You might remain there for a long time. Tell your neighbor, be confident. Come on, tell your neighbor, be confident. Why am I saying this? I believe when a word like this is coming, somebody might go into this week and something far bigger than you might approach you. A door to your promotion, a door to success, a door to your elevation, even a job that is 10 times bigger than you may come your way. And you will say, I'm sorry, I can't do it too. I don't have what it takes. Why? You lack confidence. If you fail in the day of adversity, it's because your strength is little. Confidence. Confidence. I know the God that I serve. I know the God that I serve. If there is a prayer that you need to pray, always in your life, is for you to be confident with the word of God. The word of God can change everything. It's able to change everything. But you must believe in it. A 17 year old boy looked at Goliath, 11 foot tall, and said, you, today I will feed your carcass to the birds of the air. A 17 year old boy said, no, I'm not used to these weapons that you're giving me because they are not tested, but I've tested the word of God. Do you know the word of God? Have you tested it? Have you sent the word on an errand before? The Bible says that the word of God is sharper than every two-edged sword, piercing through the bone and the marrow to the perfection of saints. That the surgery that you want to go for, if only you will believe. Thank God Brother Paul is here. Three years ago, we're ministering in, in Edmonton at a church. And the Lord said, look at this sister. I just saw her. She was drooling. Ah, I said, a daughter of Zion. I said, come here. And the Lord said to me, spread her hair. And everybody in church was watching. I said, give me the oil. You were there, sir. Your wife too was there. And I poured oil at the middle of her head. And the whole church was running all around. So I was like, what's going on? What's going on? Why are they doing this? Why are they doing this? I just did what the Lord said to me to do. And I said to her, daughter of Zion, you are made whole. They now said, ah, pastor, what you did while everybody was screaming, she has a tumor like the size of a, an egg in her head. And she's due for surgery on Tuesday. And so everybody has been praying for her in the church that she will not die because they said it's a very complicated surgery. And then the next time we went there, the sister came and said, Pastor, I didn't need to do any surgery. When I went on Tuesday, the tumor, they could not find it. The word of God is sharper than every two edged sword piercing through the bone and the marrow to the perfection of saints. May I send the word of God to you today? If you will accept it, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 8, he said, he sent his word unto Jacob and the whole of Israel, he lighted them up. Israel saw the word that he received and he became successful. The word of God will profit you. Such amen does not guarantee success. I said the word of God will profit you. Whatever stopped you from January till now, I bring that circumstances under the word of God. Let it give way for you now in the name of Jesus. I know in whom I serve. Whatever the word of God cannot do will remain undone. Everything was made, nothing was made that was not made by the word. Everything consists in the word. The Bible says he crowns the year with his goodness. That our path may drop fatness. May I send somebody another word of God. Whatever you could not attain from January till now. The remaining days of this year. By this word you will attain, achieve more than enough in the name of Jesus. You see this morning when they were teaching about the names of God, 
you will not understand the name of God until it has been used and it has made something to happen for you I have a name that I call God I was telling the pastor so that I have a name I just discovered it Jehovah overdue I just discovered that that my God is able to do some of you can even finish it exceedingly abundantly above all that I could ever ask or think the word of God the word of God the greatest gift that you can have is to be confident in the word of God the greatest gift of your life will come through the word of God it will not make sense it will not make sense it will not make sense you know my wife and I a few months ago we were talking to, we were talking to Pastor Jejina so I said so we just look at some things but I said but God you said it is a gift so all I need to do is to receive it but what I'm seeing does not look like a gift and the Holy Spirit said to me son it is the way you are looking at it I have given you a gift if your mind says it is not a gift it will never be a gift but the moment you begin to rejoice in the fact that it is a gift then you will begin to see that it is a gift and the mentality changed and the mentality changed and what we received as a gift we started to see the manifestation that indeed it is a gift may you receive the gift of God that amen is not good enough. may you receive the gift of God the greatest gift of your life is the word of God may you receive the gift of God from this moment you will be bold you will be confident I said you will be bold you will be confident I said you will be bold I said you will be confident I said you will be bold you will be confident not being bold and not being confident makes people to take what is lower than them they just take it because they've lost confidence in themselves we just manage it you just manage it God's plan for you is not to manage it's for you to live well it's for you to live well a lot of people have compromised successes in different facets of their lives because they lack confidence in themselves because they do they lack confidence in themselves they lack confidence in themselves they lack confidence in themselves you know for a very very long time when I was in secondary school we had uh, some boys they used to call them club boys they would say to me your head is long they used to call me a boy they, I would cry back home mommy, mommy. so for a very long time my hair was like sister um, um, in Kiru's hair so I started to grow my hair yes so that they would not see my head so I started to grow my hair I grew it was what not only that, I will not use a relaxer you, you know straightening comb so I started to grow yes I grew my so they would see my head but when the reality came I said you know what son you will continue to deceive yourself with this hairstyle but one day that I will never forget in my life after the hair became so big then one day when that happened i think my sister was coming in for me she now saw lies ah i said lies in my ears she said yes she says said brother you are done this thing you, you this thing, go and cut this thing i said no way so i slept and i said how do i want to continue this way so on a saturday night nobody told me i went and bought those comb that used to have bleed I shaved it up by 12 midnight. So the following morning, when we were going to church, my dad saw me. He said, what is this? He said, you are not following me to church like this. I said, but daddy, I'm not here to church. He said, with this hair, nothing on your head, you are not following me to church like this. I said, but daddy, he said, son, like this, you are not following me to church. And from that day, I said, nothing will torment me. Whether my head is long, whether it is big, I am who God says I am. Some will go and do put a botox, say they are doing an enlastment. Because 
they tell you that uh, you have flat bone. Whether it is flat, whether it is huge, God made them all. Because whether you go and change flat to robust, when you get to heaven, who God will want to see is flat. A lot of people will get to heaven, God will not recognize you. Whatever he has given you, if it's C cup, which one is here? small? If it's C or B, just take it like that and let his name be glorified. If he gives you D, rejoice in it. No said I gave you a small cup and then you now want to book big, big uh, pineapple there. Don't do that. Confidence. And when you look at it today, the most the most successful industry in the world's face in our lifetime is the self-image industry. You will buy makeup, you will say makeup, you will say one small bottle, $70 people will buy. Why? Confidence in themselves. You need to be confident in who you are. I'm walking in power, I'm walking in miracles. So I'm sending you for that as you go this week. Be confident enough that every door that will come your way, no matter how big, tall they are, walk into them. I say for someone, walk into your season. For someone, walk into your season. For someone here, walk into your season. Rise up on your feet. Put your right hand on your chest. And say to yourself, I am confident in who I am. I don't believe that the way you said it. You know, one day I was talking, I think I've shared this with us before. I was talking to my son. I said, I see you, you know, just hang around all these Caucasians and everything. So what's going on? We're having a discussion. I said, what's going on? On his birthday, Everybody were, they were all there and the door, we gave invitation cards out and then somebody just came, the doorbell rang and we opened I saw this, you know, uh, Asian girl that came inside. Oh, I'm here to see Kate. Okay, Kate. Ah. Invitation card. Oh, Kate. Okay. My son is Kade. You're calling him Kate. Okay, just come in. <laughs> came inside and then, oh, my son just said, oh, I fight. And they went and sat. And they started discussing, 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 discussing. So I was looking, I said, ah, my son invited someone I didn't know. Okay, when she leaves, we will talk about it. So days after, we just went on the bicycle. I said, son, I hope you enjoyed your birthday. Yes, ah, said, and you could see the gift that she brought. It was, that was the gift that my son was just playing with. So I said, son, what's going on? I said, oh, what about that, your friend? How is she doing? Oh, she's fine and everything. Oh, oh, okay. But you've never said anything about, oh, she's, she's a wonderful person. She, we sit on the same bench. She's, you know, both of us, we, we are working towards good grades and everything. I said, ah, but, you know, but the other people, I was shocked at what my son said. He said, daddy, all those black girls, they are fake. All they want to be is to be like Beyonce. They want to be like Rihanna. They will speak, they will dress, they would, their jeans, everything, they copy other people. Say, but you see all those ones, they're just who they are, daddy. They're just who they are. And when he said that, I said, son, may you be unto you according to God's word. <laughs> if my 11 year old could have such a mindset, and the world is in trouble, we need to be confident in who we are. Do I see, a see, I see somebody as a CEO? Yeah. Is there a managing director here? Yeah. Even I don't believe that voice, those voices. They're too low. Is there a millionaire here? Yeah. Is there a blessed man or woman here? Yeah. You know, the Lord gave the word on Friday in February. Somebody's office, I'm going to dedicate it. Your company, who is that person? May you be engraced in Jesus' name. May you be engraced in Jesus' name. 
I want you to talk to the Lord in 30 seconds. Tell the Lord, Father, give me confidence that at the edge of my success, I will not disappoint you. Can you pray to the Lord? Can you pray to the Lord? Can you pray to him? Come on, talk to the Lord. At the edge of my success, I will not disappoint you. Be confident in who you are. Be confident in who you are. That the word of God is able to deliver to you. Have a good self-esteem and image. You are who God says you are. Nothing less. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we are prayed. Amen. Let's limit our movement. Every head bow, every eyes closed. Anyone here, you want to give your life to Christ? Anybody here, you want to surrender to him? You want the Lord to take charge? You want to have the right image of God and your life? To be confident in who you are and in the word of God? Can you lift up your hands? Let me pray with you. Don't shy away from this moment. This is the time you've been waiting for that will change the course of your life. Where are you? Let me pray with you. Thank you, Lord. Father, I commit your children into your hands. Bless them. Touch them. Let their lives not remain the same. Grant them grace to serve you. Now until the very end. In the name of Jesus. And I pray for you that at the edge of your success, you will not fail. The spirit of confidence and of boldness will come upon you in the name of Jesus. David said, the Lord God is helping me so I will not be ashamed. May the help of God locate you this week. I don't believe you are amen. I don't believe you are amen. Father, because your word is true and nothing can limit your word. I send your word to only one person here as a testimony that by the word of God what you ought to have become since January that you have not. Between now and the end of this year may the word of God make you to become it. The person with the loudest amen will become it instantly.